1754, 1763, French and Indian War. The Treaty of Paris ended the French and Indian War, the American phase of a worldwide nine years. War fought between France and Great Britain. The European phase was the Seven Years' War. As a result of the war, France ceded all of its North American possessions east of the Mississippi River to Britain. The costs of the war contributed to the British government's decision to impose new taxes on its American colonies. March 22, 1765, Stamp Act, like the Sugar Act, 1764. The Stamp Act was imposed to provide increased revenues to meet the costs of defending the enlarged British Empire. It was the first British parliamentary attempt to raise revenue through direct taxation on a wide variety of colonial transactions, including legal writs, newspaper advertisements, and ships' bills of lading. Enraged colonists nullified the Stamp Act through outright refusal to use the stamps, as well as by riots, stamp burning, and intimidation of colonial stamp distributors. June 15, July 2, 1767. Townshend Acts. A series of four acts. The Townshend Acts were passed by the British Parliament in an attempt to assert what it considered to be its historic right to exert authority over. The colonies, through suspension of a recalcitrant representative assembly, and through strict provisions for the collection of revenue duties. The acts were resisted everywhere with verbal agitation and physical violence, deliberate evasion of duties, renewed non-importation agreements among merchants, and overt acts of hostility toward British enforcement agents, especially in Boston. In response, in October 1768, Parliament dispatched two regiments of the British Army to Boston, March 5, 1770. Boston Massacre. In Boston, a small British army detachment that was threatened by mob harassment opened fire and killed five people, an incident soon known as the Boston Massacre. The soldiers were charged with murder and were given a civilian trial in which John Adams conducted a successful defense. December 16, 1773, Boston Tea Party. Protesting both attacks on tea taxation without representation, and the perceived monopoly of the East India Company, a party of Bostonians thinly disguised as Mohawk people boarded ships at anchor and dumped some 10,000 pounds worth of tea into the harbor, an event popularly known as the Boston Tea Party. March-June, 1774, Intolerable Acts. In retaliation for colonial resistance to British rule, during the winter of 1773-74, the British Parliament enacted four measures that became known as the Intolerable or Coercive. Acts, the Boston Port Act, Massachusetts Government Act, Administration of Justice Act, and Quartering Act. Rather than intimidating Massachusetts and isolating it from the other colonies, the oppressive acts became the justification for convening the First Continental Congress later in 1774, September 5th, 1774, First Continental Congress convenes, called by the Committees of Correspondence in response to the Intolerable Acts. The First Continental Congress convened in Philadelphia. Fifty-six delegates represented all the colonies except Georgia. March 23, 1775, Patrick Henry's Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech, convinced that war with Great Britain was inevitable. Virginian Patrick Henry defended strong resolutions for equipping the Virginia militia to fight against the British in a fiery speech in a Richmond church with the famous words, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. April 18th, 19, 1775, Paul Revere's ride in the battles of Lexington and Concord. On the night of April 18th, 1775, Paul Revere rode from Charlestown to Lexington, both in Massachusetts, to warn that the British were marching from Boston to seize the colonial armory at Concord. En route, the British force of 700 men was met on Lexington Green by 77 local Minutemen and others. It is unclear who fired the first shot, but it sparked a skirmish that left eight Americans dead. 
At Concord, the British were met by hundreds of militiamen, outnumbered and running low on ammunition. The British column was forced to retire to Boston. On the return march, American snipers took a deadly toll on the British. Total losses in the battles of Lexington and Concord numbered 273 British and more than 90 Americans. June 17, 1775, Battle of Bunker Hill. Breed's Hill in Charlestown was the primary locus of combat in the misleadingly named Battle of Bunker Hill, which was part of the American siege of British-held Boston. Some 2,300 British troops eventually cleared the hill of the entrenched Americans, but at the cost of more than 40% of the assault force. The battle was a moral victory for the Americans. January 1776, Thomas Paine's Common Sense published. In late 1775, the colonial conflict with the British still looked like a civil war, not a war aiming to separate nations. However, the publication of Thomas Paine's irreverent pamphlet Common Sense abruptly put independence on the agenda. Paine's 50-page pamphlet, couched in elegant direct language, sold more than 100,000 copies within a few months. More than any other single publication, Common Sense paved the way for the Declaration of Independence. July 4, 1776. Declaration of Independence adopted. After the Congress recommended that colonies form their own governments, the Declaration of Independence was written by Thomas Jefferson and revised in committee. On July 2nd, the Congress voted for independence. On July 4th, it adopted the Declaration of Independence. September 22nd, 1776. Nathan Hale executed. On September 21st, 1776, having penetrated the British lines on Long Island to obtain information, American Captain Nathan Hale was captured by the British. He was hanged without trial the next day. Before his death, Hale is thought to have said, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. A remark similar to one in the play Cato by Joseph Addison, December 25th, 26, 1776. Washington crosses the Delaware, having been forced to abandon New York City and driven across New Jersey by the British. George Washington and the Continental Army struck back on Christmas night by stealthily crossing the ice-strewn Delaware River, surprising the Hessian garrison at Trenton at dawn and taking some 900 prisoners. The American triumph at Trenton and in the Battle of Princeton, January 3, 1777, roused the new country and kept the struggle for independence alive. She October 17, 1777, Burgoyne surrenders at Saratoga. Moving south from Canada in summer 1777, a British force under General. John Burgoyne captured Fort Ticonderoga, July 5th, before losing decisively at Bennington, Vermont, August 16th, and Bemis Heights, New York, October 7th. His forces depleted, Burgoyne surrendered at Saratoga, December 19th, 1777, June 19th, 1778. Washington winters at Valley Forge. Following failures at the battles of Brandywine and Germantown, Washington, and 11,000 regulars, took up winter quarters at Valley Forge, 35 kilometers, northwest of British-occupied Philadelphia. Although its ranks were decimated by rampant disease, semi-starvation, and bitter cold, the reorganized Continental Army emerged the following June as a well by disciplined and efficient fighting force. February 6, 1778. France and the United States form an alliance. The French had secretly furnished financial and material aid to the Americans since 1776, but with the signing in Paris of the Treaty of Amity and Commerce and the Treaty of Alliance, the Franco-American alliance was formalized. France began preparing fleets and armies to enter the fight, but did not formally declare war on Britain until June 1778. September 23, 1779. John Paul Jones. I have not yet begun to fight. The U.S. battleship the Bonham Richard was getting the worst of its battle, with the British vessel HMS Serapis off Flambro Head, England, when the American commander, 
John Paul Jones refused to surrender, proclaiming, I have not yet begun to fight. Jones ultimately triumphed, but he lost his ship in the process. September 1780, Benedict Arnold turns traitor, having fought valiantly in a number of battles earlier in the war. American General Benedict Arnold conspired with the British to surrender the fort at West Point, New York, that he commanded. When John Andre, the British Army officer with whom Arnold had negotiated, was hanged as a spy after he was captured, and the plot revealed, Arnold took sanctuary with the British. March 1, 1781, Articles of Confederation ratified. The Articles of Confederation, a plan of government organization that served as a bridge between the initial government by the Continental Congress and the federal government provided under the U.S. Constitution of 1787, were written in 1776, 77, and adopted by the Congress on November 15, 1777. However, the Articles were not fully ratified by the states until March 1, 1781. September-October 1781, Siege of Yorktown. After winning a costly victory at Guilford Courthouse, North Carolina, on March 15, 1781, Lord Cornwallis entered Virginia to join other British forces there, setting up a base at Yorktown. Washington's army and a force under the French Count de Rochambeau placed Yorktown under siege, and Cornwallis surrendered his army of more than 7,000 men on October 19, 1781. September 3, 1783, Treaty of Paris ends the war. After the British defeat at Yorktown, the land battles in America largely died out. But the fighting continued at sea, chiefly between the British and America's European allies, which came to include Spain and the Netherlands. The military verdict in North America was reflected in the preliminary Anglo-American Peace Treaty of 1782, which was included in the Treaty of Paris of 1783. By its terms, Britain recognized the independence of the United States, with generous boundaries, including the Mississippi River on the west. Britain retained Canada but ceded East and West Florida to Spain.